Hi, this is Dr. Kimisato. This lecture specifically discuss about importance of lifting variations. We have different categories of lifting variations in each body parts and then also the total body. The first lecture of this course is to talk about how does training change physically. We want to know a little bit more about the physical adaptations and then also physiological adaptation of a different type of training. The misunderstanding concepts and then conducts of resistance training is very common, especially from coaches. So let's pick some examples here. The first one, a lot of people think that the weight training makes me bigger and tight. And conceptually, because the muscle gets bigger and you feel like you're moving slower, or because of that big muscle, your joint gets tighter. But actually, it is not that case and we'll explain this throughout this lecture. The second one, weight training did not help my performance. I hear this a lot from coaches, and then simply because you didn't do the right type of training for a specific time period. So again, that you have to learn how to do the weight training in a specific way, or you can easily do the weight training wrong to actually decline your athletic performance. The third one, this is very common from endurance athletes because the weight training really doesn't help the endurance athletes, but it is not also the case. The strength training actually helps endurance athletes to improve their performance. And another one, this is very common, but the skill-oriented sports athletes, for example, the skill that is very needed for some sports like uh, table tennis or badminton, a lot of time people think that the weight training is a waste of time, but it's not because it requires a lot of quickness and agility and then also some type of endurance throughout that sport. So again, that the, these are kind of common misconcepts that the people have about the weight training. And what we want to go through is we want to talk about the whole body, but also we want to talk about the progression. A lot of the misconduct that we see is when we do the weight training, we don't want to separate body parts, but that is very common in the fitness and health world. And it started from the machine exercise because each machine have a circuit-based training. You do the chest, back, arms, legs, something like that. But we don't actually get to do that kind of stuff in athletic performance. So we have to be very careful on what kind of exercise is really helpful and what kind of exercise is actually good intensity to begin with. So we'll talk about this throughout these lectures. Let's talk about the effectiveness of resistance training. So instead of we're doing a body part specific weight training, we're gonna separate it to a little bit different way in the lifting variations. So we're gonna do the push movement, something that you actually push through, and then the pull movement, something that you're pulling towards to your body. And then the third one, any type of rotational action. So we're gonna separate it to three different lifting variations. And then also we'll talk about the displacement variation. What that means is the full range of motion to partial range of motion of each of the lifts. For example, if we're doing a back squat, you can actually go all the way down and then come up as a full range of motion and we have a partial lift on the back squat being halfway or quarter squat. So we can actually change the intensity and then also training volume by doing full versus partial lifts. And then the third one, probably the very important part of the athletic population to do the weight training is the intensity variations. No matter what you use, whether it's a light weight or heavy weights, your intention is to move the weights as fast as possible. And then this is very necessary to improve the power. If you move the weights very slow, when the weights is light, then it's not very uh, effective in terms of doing the weight training. You have to be able to move the weights fast no matter what kind of weights we use. And of course, if it's a heavy weight, you cannot move the weights fast, but the intention is to move it as fast as possible for improving power output. We talked about the lifting variations, so I want to make some examples for what type of exercise on each of that category. 
So let's say if it's a push movement, we talk about the progression of a squat. So we can do different types of squat. When you hear the squat, usually you can only think of one or two, but in this lecture, I want to introduce a progressive way of doing different types of squatting. And then also, the pressing motion as a push movement, we'll talk about the bench press, shoulder press, or step up as a low extremity exercise. We'll have different examples. And the pulling movement, we'll talk about doing some of the heavier weights, heavier loads with the rowing action to deadlift. And some of the high speed action as pull ups or using some of the pulling machines. And the last one, the rotational movement. We can use the cable machines or we can use a medicine ball to create some type of fast, powerful movement of throwing actions as a rotational movement. I want to take a moment to explain about the different exercise variations, especially for the junior athletes. Because sometimes if the athletes are a little younger and a little immature to do heavy lifting or using a bar, we can also use different type of resistance. So I want to explain a little bit about the junior athletes training and using different exercise variations. You can of course use the dumbbells because the dumbbells have a little bit smaller weight. So you can do a lot of exercises with the dumbbell. And then this has a lot to do with the body size and then also the hand size. So we can use a smaller weight such as dumbbell. Also, you can use a medicine ball because a lot of time the barbell itself might be too heavy or hard to control. So we can use the medicine ball to mimic the action of Olympic style lifting as well as some of the resistance training. Let's talk about intensity and volume and an exercise selection. So it is very important to understand the intensity and volume. I mentioned this earlier in the beginning that this is probably the most important part to understand when you work with athletic population. So let's say the intensity part. We have two different kinds of uh, attention to attack for intensity decision making. So the first one is 100% RM, so you use a percentage RM, repetition maximum. So let's say you have 100% and you can choose 90%, 80%, or 70% of intensity to do certain exercises with certain sets and repetitions. And then the other one is called reps in reserve or rep left count. And then basically what it is, is it's very useful for skill-oriented sports, but also some sports like baseball who play game all the time in a long season where you cannot do a lot of high intensity exercises. This is a little different from percentage RM. I'm pretty sure that the percentage RM is a very common way to know what kind of intensity to use, but the reps in reserve is a little bit new to a lot of people. And then basically what you do is you do, let's say, five times, five repetitions, and then after that, you ask the athlete, how many more can you do? And he or she might say, oh, I can probably do three or four more. So what that means is, total amount is about eight or nine, but you're actually doing it about five. So the intention is to minimize the fatigue. And this is somewhat important for those athletes who play sports very long season and then almost no, uh, no off season. So what we can do is reduce the overall intensity to minimize the fatigue while they are playing the game or having a long season. So again, that the percentage RM is a very useful measure for hypertrophy, but it's not very useful for some athletes who are always playing the games. And then that leads to the volume. The greater volume is very good to fatigue. So what that means is that when you're doing the hypertrophy phase, the more fatigue to the muscle and have a sufficient amount of recovery, and then you get great effect of hypertrophy. So you actually wanna do the greater volume during the hypertrophy phase. 
So you want to do, let's say, five sets of ten or three sets of ten of two to three exercises to cause the fatigue on a certain muscle parts. Or if you talk about the low the volume, the purpose of doing that lowering the volume, meaning that the, let's say three sets of three or three sets of two of several exercises to actually reduce the uh, actual fatigue and purpose to recover. So you have a recovery as a tapering phase or deloading phase, lowering the volume is very necessary. And then the last one is the exercise selections. So depending on the phase of the training, so let's say if you have the beginning phase, you don't have to do high intensity, but you might want to do bigger volume because you want to cover different exercises to learn how to do. And then when it comes to the athletes, some junior athletes, as I mentioned before, you might want to do different exercises but a lighter intensity and get to know how much they can do, how much weight they can do, or what kind of exercise is easy for them to do. So you can actually use that as a learning period. But when it comes to more of hypertrophy, hypertrophy phase or maximal strength or tapering, when it gets to a very specific phase, then you really have to put the weights on or you really have to do the exercise correctly so you can use some of the exercise selection to learn how to do it right in the beginning. So you, when the time counts, you can actually do those exercises with a very effective intensity and volume. So again, that the intensity and volume and then exercise selections are super important to learn as a trainers. We have an example in this slide talking about when to use appropriate intensity and volume. So this is a very good example step by step to look at what kind of exercise and what kind of intensity and volume is appropriate for each phase of the training. So let's go through one by one. So the first one, when you actually have the beginners starting to train, what we call the return to fitness. And then basically this phase what you want to do is you're trying to teach people how to do the certain exercises and then also you are training athletes to be able to train at the next stage. So usually it takes several weeks and learning the lifts with about three sets of five, okay? It doesn't have to be many repetitions, but the, what we want to do is try to do it as uh, correctly as possible to learn new exercises. And then also in this phase, you can increase the intensity as the weeks goes to develop the basic strengths. And you can actually increase the intensity while maintaining about three sets of five repetitions. The second phase, once you learn how to do those exercises, and then you can actually do a little bit more volume. So the second part is to talk about the strength endurance. So for example, sets and repetition is going to be maybe about three sets of 10 to create a little bit of muscle endurance going with a medium intensity and volume, and then going into the hypertrophy. And then when you actually do the hypertrophy, the intensity might be a little bit higher, but also the volume becomes higher. So the target volume is, let's say, three to five sets of 10 repetitions with different exercises. And then once you build the hypertrophy phase, in other words, building the engine, now you have to fine tune the engine in the next phase. So you do max strength or max power to create a higher intensity, but the volume itself is a little bit lower. So you can have an intensity to, let's say 90%, and the volume wise still stay a little bit medium side, so maybe two, three sets of five repetitions. And then you go into the max power, and then now that the intensity is a little bit lower as well as volume, but the, because of the power, the emphasis, you have to be able to move that object very quickly. So some of the high intensity stuff you cannot move quickly because the weight is too heavy, so you have to reduce down the intensity in order to move the object quick. 
And then the last stage is the tapering, meaning that you're trying to reduce the training volume to recruit more recovery so the body feels fresh. And this is necessary right before the competition. A lot of times the coaches want to do as many as possible in the practice sessions preparing for the games, but that this actually acts as a counter um, acting of the uh, um, competition phase because you do too much, it causes fatigue. So you actually want to taper down the training volume and try to recruit that recovery so the body feels fresh and easy to prepare for the competition. Let's summarize this whole concept. If the training is designed and performed correctly, chances are you're going to be very well prepared in terms of going to the next phase. So what we want to do is have appropriate designing in terms of trying to get the exercise intensity and volume and then exercise selection right so the muscle character changes. The more acting to fast twitch fibers for a lot of strength and power athletes or more slow twitch fibers for endurance athletes. And then also depending on the exercise routine, the muscle size changes as well. So if you're trying to increase the muscle size and then reduce the body fat, then it, it, it is necessary to have the greater cross-sectional area to have higher metabolism. And then more than anything else, a lot of people actually don't know this, but the, from this design, you're actually trying to stimulate the neuromuscular efficiency. For example, if you're always doing some heavy weights and then moving slow motion, your neuromuscular activation is to be, become very accustomed to the movement of a slow action. But if your sports requires a really quick, powerful movement, it counteracts. So what you have to be careful is trying to train the body the way that the actual sports requires you to move. So it's necessary to have more motor unit recruitment and also the faster action potential for high intensity or power related exercise to be able to stimulate that neuromuscular efficiency. So again, that the, this section here is very important to understand the conceptual part of how training design really helps to propel athletes' performance. We discuss about how training intensity, the volume, and then exercise selection is very important in each phase of the training. So exercise selection is not very random. It's a very well thought process in order to make changes. So it is very important to understand this section before we move on to learning how to do some lifting variations.